This is another plumbing tray calculations video. And this video will be discussing the 45 degree parallel offset. In our picture we have here it happens to be a three pipe parallel offset, uh, 45 offset, three offset. Um, any parallel can be anything from two pipes onwards. In this case, we have three pipes for our example. In the parallel offset, our key goal is to maintain the spread between all the horizontal piping. So the distance between A to center of D, we want to maintain it all through the offset, including where the travel pieces are. So between pipe B and E, we want to maintain that same spread, whatever number that is, whatever measurement it is, we will maintain it. And then when we go back horizontal again, contain that, uh, continue that same measurement between pipe C and E. So let's say as an example between uh, the center and center measure between A and D was 12 inches. We would want to maintain 12 inches between B and E and 12 inches between C and F. Same on the bottom. The bottom doesn't have to be the same uh, same spread or the same distance between the two pipes. So between pipe D and G, it could be a spread of 6 inches, let's say, center, center. We want to maintain that all the way through to two travel pieces between E and H. We want to maintain that same 6 inches. And then... After that as well, when we go horizontal again, between F and I, we want to maintain that same six inches. So all again, all through the, the offset. A key factor in maintaining this throughout will be what is known as our spread allowance. And in order to get our spread allowance, we need to know what our spread is. And again, that is just the center to center dimension between the two horizontal pipes. So between A and D, which happens to be what J is. And the other spread down at the bottom between D and G, which happens to be whatever H is. Part of getting started is we need to know our offset uh, factors. We can get that from our offset factor table. And since we're looking at the 45 degree, we can go right to the bottom of the page here where it says for parallel offsets in order to find what's called the spread allowance, which we'll talk about in a second, we need to know the spread and then multiply it by the factor, and the factor being for 45 degree offsets, 0 0.414. So looking at this diagram on the screen here, we have a 3 pi parallel offset again. And what we're trying to do by using the spread to calculate the spread allowance is to help us um, either lengthen or shorten the pieces of pipe we need in order to main that spread all throughout the offset. So what I mean is between pipe B and D, we'll notice that if we draw a center line from the center of the 45 off of A all the way down to D, D is much longer than A. It goes from that red line, that center line from the 45 over to its 45 center line. And that distance in between there is our spread allowance. And again, in order to calculate that spread allowance, we need to know the spread between A and D, which is our J measurement over here. And we'll be timing that by 0 0.414. When you're going through the offset on the upper level, we also run into that spread allowance thing again. The same exact spread allowance as I previously mentioned, but now it's between F and C, or C and F. We take a center line from the 45 of F all the way up to C. We'll notice that C is a little bit longer, and C is is this much longer over to the next red line, which is the center line of its 45. And again, so that distance in between the two red lines is its spread allowance that we need to know. And for us, we're going to call it spread allowance 1. So we need to know the spread. In our case, the first spread, which, which equals the center center dimension of J. Spread allowance equals spread X. Spread allowance 1, which we're working on right now at the top. Our spread is J, and we times it by the factor. So our spread allowance formula afterwards will be spread allowance equals spread times 
0.414 and our spread representing our J. Once we calculate this, we'll have to do a spread allowance for the bottom part of the offset because the spread between the two pipes in the bottom hand could be a lot different, smaller or larger. So we need to know what the spread is between D and G so we can maintain it all the way through the piping offset, which was also referenced by the measurement K. So first we need to know the spread. Spread 2, we're going to call it. Spread allowance 2. is uh, the spread 2 is known as this k dimension from center to center. A little bit of error on the formula here, but our spread allowance is going to equal spread x. And in brackets, it should say SA2 because we're working on SA2 as in the picture. That's our spread allowance 2 we're working on. And we're going to take our spread k and, and times it by the factor. So again, to find spread allowance, and it should say SA2 equals spread times 0.414, which is K for spread. Once well, we have the spread allowance, now we can work on finding all the different pipes. So finding A, D, G, B, E, H, C, F, and I. So by looking at pipe A, center, center, if we want to find that, we have to find a pipe that's parallel to it, adjacent to it. And the only one adjacent to or parallel to it is pipe D, the closest one. So we have to know what D is, center, center. And then we subtract spread allowance 1, which we've already calculated. Up next, pipe D. Pipe D is the middle of the three-pipe parallel offset. So we have two choices of formulas. We can either know the A, center, center. And then we can add spread allowance 2 because when we go from A to D, the pipe is getting larger. So we're adding. Or if we want to find out D center to center, we can use the G at the bottom center to center measurement and subtract because we're going from G a bigger pipe to D a smaller pipe. And we'll subtract spread allowance too because that's the spread allowance that's located in the bottom half of the offset. To find G, G we only have one parallel to it really close to us and that's D. So we'd have to know for G, we'd have to find D center to center and then add spread allowance too. Again, going from a smaller pipe to a bigger pipe. At the other half of our parallel offset, to find C, the closest one adjacent to it, parallel, is our F. So we need to know our F center to center, and because we are um, going from F to C, which is a bigger pipe, we need to add, and we need to add spread allowance 1, which is located in the, on the top half. To find pipe F, the middle one, we have two choices. So we can use the center center dimension of C, which is a bigger pipe, and subtract spread allowance 1, which is up in the upper half, to get our F pipe, which is smaller. Or we can, to find F center center, we can take I, a smaller pipe, and add spread allowance 2. Spread allowance 2, of course, being in the bottom half and adding it. And lastly, for I, we have one choice. We have to know the F center center, and we subtract spread allowance 2. To find our other three pipes, pipe B, E, and H, all pipe B and H, B, E, and H, center, center, these are all our travel pieces. So they will all work out, no matter what pipe size it is, what pipe material is, to have the same center to center between 45 to 45, the same exact same measurement for all three. So our formula would be offset times 1.414. So we need to know our offset. We times that by 0.414. We'll get our center to center for B, E, and H. And we can also get our pipes B, E, and H center center by knowing, of course, our vents and timesing it by 1.414. So we have two options there. And that's the end of the video.